don't sing, I don't play, I don't join, I don't attend, I don't smile, I don't care, why should I, life's not fair, I don't sing, can't harmonize, I don't feel, till I Realize you're in my life. Wait, why and how? I don't say for God. I want to now. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Yeyat Soriano's book launch premiere. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're in for a good time talking about the joys and pains of high school life. If you are young, sit up and try to see if you find yourself in any of the characters. If you're young at heart and want to reminisce about your youth, or if you have kids in school, it will be very worthwhile to listen to the unique stories that are about to be shared in this video premiere. Before we jump into the main event, let us tell you about the contest we are having while tuning in. Tune in for InTune is an online raffle contest open to all likers of Yeyat Soriano's Facebook page. Get a chance to win a free signed copy of Yeyat Soriano's new book InTune along with other freebies from our sponsors. How do you join? Simple! Just make sure you click attending on the Intune book launch event on Facebook and are aware of the list of things that you need to look out for while watching this video premiere. To refresh your memory, they are as follows. Once you have spotted everything on the list, jump right at the comment section of the promo poster and put your answers there. Relevant links can be found at the caption of this video premiere. All of those who got the right answers will be qualified for the e-raffle draw. Winners will be posted on November 25 on both Yeyat Soriano's Facebook page and official Instagram account. Make sure you comment your answers before the end of November 23, since this promo will only run until then. Keep an eye out and tune in for In Tune. Good luck! My name is Isabella Ingrid. I am 20 years old. I'm a third-year college student and the course that I am taking up is a bachelor degree in history. Hi, I am Carl Jane, 20 years old. I'm currently um, in my second year, taking up Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Hello, I am Danny. I took education in my college course. And although it seems unrelated to what I'm doing now, I'm also very passionate about education. I am Ron Man. I'm 21 years old. I'm actually graduating next term. I'm finishing a political science degree in De La Salle University. My name is Justine Faith. I am 18 years old. I am a senior high school graduate and an incoming college student. I applied for different colleges, but due to the pandemic and our financial issues, I decided that I would enroll for this school year. I don't really have much hobbies after school since I am a working student. But when I am free, I casually go outside with friends. Hobbies. I do love watching movies, series, and Netflix. I love listening to music. love to write songs occasionally. And uh, I love writing. Besides uh, schoolwork, uh, extracurricular activities, I play the drums um, for our church in a worship team and I also play for a band and I also like rapping and writing rap music so yeah, try to check those out. I make 
a lot of YouTube videos. I started streaming also. I stream video games and every now and then I also perform my music live. I like writing music, composing, and it's also a hobby I have with my dad. Sometimes I draw or paint to enhance my artistic skills. No, it wasn't my plan to take up history. Um, since I didn't pass the course that I wanted, I applied for a reconsider just so I can get in my dream school and eventually shift courses. At first, no. PAC wasn't totally in my plan. Even social work, upon entering college, like I was really uncertain and things happened. Ayun. After a year, I decided to shift and I do hope that this course would be my final course. I, didn't, I do not plan to shift again. I'm gonna settle and I am loving my new course now. Actually, my initial interest was international studies and you know international diplomacy, international relations. But then I realized that I really wanted to focus on local politics and making a difference here. I decided to just pursue political science and really get down to the nitty gritty of Philippine politics. For me, I think it was meant to be that I still took education. Maybe if I took a music course or an art course, it would drive me insane and I might end up hating art. <laughs> I'm glad that's not what happened. <laughs> Instead, it makes me want it even more. It wasn't my plan to not enroll this academic year. But due to many circumstances, I need to go with the flow and make decisions out of the situation. No, it wasn't hard for me because even before entering college, I really know what I wanted to take up. But along the way, it made me wonder if this is really the path I really want to take. Definitely no. It's really not easy. I was torn between choosing a course that I know na pagkatapos ko kaagad dito, makakarap agad ako ng trabaho, kikita agad ako ng pera, makakapag-ipon ako kaagad, versus this specific course that I know I would love to take and aim talaga yung passion ko. Pero in the end, I take up Bachelor of Arts and Communication. Alam kong sobrang aligned sa ideals and aspirations ko sa buhay as well as sa mga skills and talent ko. <laughs> wow, my talents! So, ayun. Kaya sobrang napamahal ka agad sa akin yung Bachelor of Arts and Communication. So, sa kabila ng lahat, choose passion over practicality. <laughs> it was actually pretty easy. I grew up in a household where they talked a lot about politics because it's also in my parents' profession. And I was always interested in how the government actually worked and how decision-making um, stems from the leaders of our country. I don't know, I just find it really cool and it felt natural with me. And so I decided to just pursue what I found interesting. Well, since we own a school, it was only natural for me to help and learn, accumulate new knowledge as much as I can. And yeah, to be honest, I, I'm really passionate as well towards education. Yes, because at first I decided to take up fine arts because I draw and paint a lot. But due to my studies, since I took up ABM strand in senior high, I need to set aside my hobbies so I can focus more on my studies. I did face a lot of challenges even before college started and up until I was actually studying. Of course, there will be a lot of stress and pressure from other people. And there will be a lot of problems when it comes to finances. Maraming challenge talaga sa akin. Bago pa lang ako pumasok sa college, sobrang uncertain ko na sa mga bagay-bagay. Sa pagpili ng course, sobrang nahirapan ako. Hanggang sa pag-decide kung ito ba talaga yung para sa akin, dumating sa point na naging existential na yung problema ko. Like, naghahanap na talaga ako ng deeper meaning sa buhay ko. My challenges would be maybe sometimes I focus on one project or one paper too much that I neglect my other responsibilities, whether it's be a brother, son, or you know, just things that are expected of me. And I think in college, that's really a big problem, you know, just being able to spread yourself uh, efficiently and enjoy yourself as well and not just uh, continue to work and work until you're at the ground. So there's like a fine line where you can enjoy 
all those things but still grow as a person well of course my education always felt like it was unrelated <laughs> um, as a teacher you have to dedicate a lot of time to your students and my first full-time job was very demanding the workload was heavy but i still insisted that i must do gigs busk and perform write music so it was very heavy for me but at the end of the day because of your passions you're gonna do something about it <laughs> you love it yes i did face a lot of challenges so first of all i have two choices it's either to enroll or work to help my family my first choice is to enroll but due to my family problems and financial issues i wasn't able to enroll my second choice is to work but since i haven't found a job that suits me well i'm staying at home right now so the most challenging part for me was how can i be of help since i'm staying at home and not studying right now it's easy to overcome these challenges if you surround yourself with people who loves and supports you. I always have my family, relatives, and friends who always make sure that I was doing fine while I was studying. But the most important thing in overcoming these challenges is to trust and believe in yourself that these things will pass and everything will be alright no matter what happens. Actually, I don't know and I believe na hindi ko kaya yun mag-isa. That's why I'm really thankful with my family. Especially God. I know He is with me all throughout the way ng buong proseso na yun. And He guided me all throughout the way. Gives me strength. And andun din yung support ng pamilya mo, ng mga kaibigan mo. Kaya, yun, I believe I able to overcome the challenges. And now I am happy with my course and the chosen career path that I'm currently taking. And I have no regrets at all. For me to overcome my challenges, I need to be productive enough to look for a job and save up money for my college funds. And also, I need to have a positive mindset for me to focus what my goals are and for me to overcome my challenges. I think that being grounded in church helped me overcome those challenges. Uh, I think it starts with uh, your relationship with God and that's how it grounded me. So my involvement in church and being active in the worship team really led me to become more stable emotionally and spiritually, which in turn positively affected my physical health. And I think uh, I'm, so, I'm just so grateful to be able to spend time in church and be groomed by the leaders there. When your life is out of tune, you have to remind yourself what you want and what would make you feel safe inside. Because even if you do take a course that you think you want, life doesn't end after college. You have a long way ahead of you and a course isn't the answer to your passions. The answer is yourself. Hi everyone, thank you for sharing this moment with me. I'm Yayat Soriano and I'm an author. I've been writing since way, way, way before. Um, and I started self-publishing in 2015. And since then I've released around five standalone books and I've contributed to at least eight anthologies. I've written in the different genres like speculative fiction, crime fiction, and contemporary romance. I always say that I write for the story, not really for the genre, so that's why I, I straddle different genres when I write. I'm a full-time IT manager covering the Asia-Pacific region for a multinational company. I'm a wife with three kids. Sometimes I amaze myself as well. But I guess if you truly have a passion, you will find time or you will make the time. It's been two years since I last released the book. So um, I would say that, you know, it's about time. This book is actually two years in the making. Lots of blood, sweat and tears went into this, you know, into the writing of this book. So I'm really glad that I've come to this point where I, where I can share the story with all of you. In tune, 
in tune in tune no matter how you pronounce it this book is at its core a love story and a coming of age story so the girl is a scholar at a private school who makes ends meet by saving money from her part-time job and um, saving money by basically trying to limit her spending so sometimes that means she will skip meals <laughs> at school or you know just really buy um, the cheapest meal that she could her big dream really is to be the first of her family to go to college and to finish college now the boy is a son of a theater legend and a real estate mogul but he's shy and reserved because of the unrealistic expectations of people because of who his parents are and his big dream is to finally step out of the shadows of his parents they're both senior high school students meet Sydney Mendoza and he meet Raimundo the thing that I love about this story is that Sid and Hime have very colorful friends and families. So let me talk about them. Let's start with Sid's family. Her dad is a tricycle driver. Her mom has rackets to earn money, like buying chicharron in bulk, repackaging them, and then selling them off to um, Sari Sari stores and Karinderias. Um, her elder brother, Cairo, works in a fast food restaurant. Her elder sister, Vienna, works as a sales lady in a famous mall. And she has her little sister, Geneva, who's just starting school. She also has a nephew, Benji. So, you may have noticed, Sydney, Cairo, Vienna and Geneva. Yes, so their parents travel around the world through their kids' names. Now, let's go to Himi. Uh, as mentioned, Himi's parents are theater legend Isabella Taya Raimundo and real estate mogul Rafael Raimundo. Let's talk about their friends. Sydney's best friend is Chloe who's a very talented dancer, um, except that her dance troupe in school doesn't really give her the chance to show off her talents by, you know, giving her any solo routines. They just always leave her at the back as, you know, part of the ensemble. Um, Chloe likes Emmett, who's sort of a emo guy, but who's very intelligent. And then Himig has his two best friends from childhood. There's um, Cha, who is a tech genius, who looks like an angel. And then there's gorgeous Zion, who is also very enigmatic. There are two conflicts, actually. First is Sid and Himig and their friends dealing with school bullies, right? Um, being targeted and working together in order to stand up to these bullies to show that they should not be trampled on, so to speak. The second conflict is something that probably hits closer to home because while we have bullies in school, you know, there are different kinds of bullying. Um, and sometimes at home it also happens, right? But it's not really bullying per se but it's really when you feel the pressure of the responsibility towards the family, right? Versus what you really want to do or your dreams. So as mentioned, Sid wants to go to college and she's been saving up for it. Um, she's, she's been applying to all the scholarship foundations that she could find just so she could get to a college. Um, she's trying to study to get good grades to get into college. But then her family, her mom in particular, actually want her to go abroad and work after high school. Sydney's a good singer 
essentially, right? And she's part of a band, and this band has an opportunity to go to Korea for a two-year contract. Yeah. And what does he choose, right? Um, but through it all, Sid and he make, um, you know, support each other, and of course, <laughs> they fall for each other. The first group of co-presenters are key to the writing process. Sierra Lexis Communications Inc. provides developmental editing, copy editing, manuscript preparation, and training services. Better editors lead to better books. Ray's Publishing and Printing Services is a godsend for us independent self-published authors since they accept printing of a minimum of five books at a time. Their mission is to provide quality yet affordable books to independent authors. Ray's Publishing and Printing Services has very generously donated the books that will be given away as part of this launch. Romance Writers of the Philippines, or RWP, is all about working toward better written, better edited, better produced, and better marketed romance stories from Filipino romance writers. RWP organizes workshops and events that connect authors with readers as well as other authors and professionals within the publishing industry so they can expand their network. Save the date, 0 2021 for the online Philippine Romance Convention. As the title of the book suggests, there's a lot of music infused in the story. I wrote five songs uh, for the book. And for me to complete the story, I had to hear um, the songs in real life. So I collaborated with awesome people to bring these songs to life. The first song that I made was um, Stand Up. Uh, so this is basically the um, anthem or an anti-bullying anthem that uh, Sid and he made, wrote together and sang together during one performance. And the theme of that event was rock and roll. So the song had to be a bit rock and roll. So I asked uh, my friend Ayus Arcelia to write the music um, for the song. And he did. He actually did a sort of classic rock type of theme um, to the music. And um, I love it. The song was actually written as a duet and we've been jamming, singing the song together, but you know, pandemic struck, so it's quite difficult to really record it. So hopefully we will have the chance to perform it or sing it together one of these days, <laughs> or maybe do a proper recording of it as well in the future. Second song uh, that got completed was I Don't Sing. I was the one who made the music uh, to this song because in my mind, this is the song that accompanies Chloe's solo dance routine in one scene. And um, I had a tune already. Uh, I asked my nephew-in-law, uh, Tito Tapnyo, who lives in the US, by the way, to put some music into the tune uh, that, I, uh, that I created. And then um, after he did that, I asked my daughter, Jamie, Soriano to sing it because it had to have a young voice. Initially, I did I did the singing, but of course, it sounds different if it's a young person singing it, right? Um, plus, in the in the story, it was Sydney singing it, so I asked Jamie to sing it for me. But aside from that, I also asked her to choreograph Chloe's dance routine so that I could hear and see the whole performance happening. After that, I, I was able to complete the scene in the book. The next song that got made was Why Me? And the song is a question to bullies, right? Like, why me? Why are you picking on me? And I'm sure a lot of us have experienced some sort of bullying, you know, not just in school, um, not in the family, even maybe in the workplace or everywhere, you know, online even, right? So this song might resonate. And um, for this, I asked my daughter's friend, uh, Kaya Katikbak, who's a very talented musician as well, to create the music and perform the song. And she gave it a very 
rock treatment as well, which I really, really love. And aside from that, Kaya also read the story and she helped me ensure that my musical and, you know, pop culture references are up to date <laughs> and relatable. So current and relatable. The fourth song is Who Will I Become? And it's about the question that kids ask when they're trying to decide what to do, right? Um, for the future, normally this is what, you know, high school students go through when they're trying to pick a course, right, for college or whether they're going to college at all or whether they're just going to work or whether, you know, what would they do after high school? And for this song, I asked um, a good friend of mine, Giselle Maris Bacala or Magsi to work with her band and create music and perform the song and she got her band trigger happy band um, to create the music and perform it um, so trigger happy is composed of brian rafael michael who actually composed the music he played the ukulele and did the male vocals for the song of course Giselle Maris Bacala on Magsi, who did the female vocals. Then there is Mark Christian Bernal on guitars, Dane De La Cruz on drums, and of course, Aljon, Aljon Aviles on guitars. The last song is the title track, In Tune. And this one's a bit tricky because the song is not like the others. It's not rock and roll it's more uh, a musical type of song and um, I asked my daughter's friend Miguel Lorenzo Ondevilla to compose the music and to play the piano um, as instrumental for the song he's actually a very excellent um, piano player and um, so he did. He composed the music, he played the piano, and then um, I asked him and my daughter, Jamie, to sing the song for me. Again, it's a duet, and I wanted to really get a sense of what it would sound like and what they would look like while they're, while they're performing the song. Um, again, and that's, uh, you know, it helped me a lot in completing the story or the scene where that song was played. In the story, actually, uh, the reason why the style is a bit different and why it's a bit musical was that he makes mother uh, actually helped him compose the song. So, there's that. So, there you go. The um, creation of the music was actually part of the writing of the story and soon I would also want to actually release the music properly and maybe when live performances are allowed that's when we could do a proper release we couldn't record each of the songs properly as well so soon uh, we'll release the five songs we'll have musical performances and that would also add on to the experience of reading the book so for now I think we'll just be content with hearing snippets of the songs um, all throughout this launch because um, uh, I did manage to get, you know, some audios of the songs, some of them more complete than the others. Yeah, a lot of the songs that you've been hearing as background music are those songs. The second group of co-presenters have advocacies that I'm highly supportive of. Rotary Club of Metro Aurora is an organization that is very close to my heart. I've been working with them for the past few years on joint programs. The organization's thrust is to empower women and children, especially victims of abuse. Kaagapai Teacher Support is a support network by teachers for teachers. Said support comes in the form of either quality training or access to resources and the comfort of being part of a community, all free of charge. Especially now during this pandemic, teachers need a lot of support. And I am so proud of my teacher nephews, Franco Nicolo Adun, who is the founder of Kaagapai, and Joseph Angelo Santos, who together with their colleague, Angelo Maliari, handled the administration of the group, a business focused on providing options for health and wellness 
wellness is in itself an advocacy. Wellness for All is a USANA independent distributor owned by my niece, Jinky S. Adun, and her partners, Leigh Morales and Tonette Quintal. Wellness for All is your one-stop online wellness shop. Their taglines are, we care for the life you live and quality life at your own selection. They distribute USANA vitamins and supplements nationwide. The next co-presenter caters to bullies. Not like the bullies from Sid and Phoenix School, but the cute kind of bullies. American bullies. Roy's Farm and Pet Shop at Tiendecita caters to American bullies, the dog breed that is gaining a lot of popularity nowadays. Owned by Roy de Guzman, the pet shop focuses specifically on the Godzilla line. Not the monster, but the dog. Look at that cutie! The pet shop also provides grooming services as well as raw food and other merchandise for sale. The book is um, dedicated to all those who need to hear this. Never get tired of standing up for who you truly are and what you believe in. I also dedicated the book to a very special girl. Uh, Maxine Blanco was my daughter's very close friend and she was a constant presence in our house. She was pretty, perky, always smiling, laughing, talking, talking and talking. Um, I named the main girl Bully in the story after her and she loved it. Um, she helped me review my manuscript and um, encouraged me to complete the story. Unfortunately, um, she got her angel wings before I could release the book. I'd like to think that she is now in a vast field of sunflowers and she's just smiling and laughing. I'm sure she would love what the story has evolved into and um, she'd be glad that she inspired me to complete the story. So. This is for you, Max. And I still owe you the story where Maxine, the girl bully, gets her happily ever after. Thank you. So, the book in June is available on Amazon, both the ebook and the paperback version. And for the Philippine based people that would want their own paperbacks, you can order direct from me uh, from my order form. Uh, my other books, you see them on my videos, are also available in Amazon as well as through my um, order form. So I hope you would get a copy. Uh, in tune uh, and any of my books as well um, and if you enjoy reading the story you know please post a review on goodreads or amazon or any social media platform that will be greatly appreciated please support filipino authors independent authors as well uh, thank you very much let me tell you about the people who inspired me to uh, write this story. I was inspired by my daughter's high school friends when I wrote this book. While I had my own high school memories, I went to an all-girl Catholic school, so they were a bit limited. My daughter's friends were always at my home. Um, I was also always at her school for events, BTC, whatever. and. Um, I continue to be there actually for my two younger kids. So, Inchung was basically modeled from a combination of my and my daughter's high school experiences with a dash of fiction, of course. Um, as an homage to my daughter's friends, some of their names actually made it into the book. I mentioned Maxine earlier, but there's also Alan and Jason. There's Abby. Clarice, Kim, Alec, and Daniela. Uh, special thanks to Daniela 
uh, because her expression Schmidt was my basis for Sydney's Schmidt. I also want to thank uh, Bevy Adams for sharing her experiences as a scholar all the while working in a band on the side. She also went to Korea actually to work with her band. Her life was the first um, inspiration for Sydney's situation. Thanks to my colleagues uh, Sydney Aliego and Charlon Cha Ignacio for lending their names to Sid and Cha. I hope you like your namesake characters. A big thank you to Miss Nina V. Esguera and her Romance Class YA workshop where I wrote the first draft of the story. Thanks also to Aga Ilianera, the editor during the workshop, for her very helpful comments. When you write, you need other people to review your work and provide you comments. In my case, I went to fellow writers as well as representatives of my target audience. A big thank you to all my beta readers, H. Bentham or Bench, Elizabeth Gallit, Jessica Larson, Stella Torres, Maxine Blanco, Caleb Lapira, Regine Therese Lemana, Kaya Kadigbak, and KB Menyado. You have to constantly improve your story. In my case, I had Liana S. Bautista to thank since she was my developmental editor. She helped review my manuscript and she pointed out problematic areas which led me to tighten the story and improve the character development. Thanks, Liana. So you have the perfect story, but the vessel by which you will transport the story to the audience should be close to perfect as well. The book cover is key. In my case, I have Janus Aragones Zate of The Erudite Artist to thank for the gorgeously painted cover. Thank you, Janus. The interior of the book should also be perfect, and in my case, Miles E. Tan formatted my manuscript and included whimsical and musical components that are in line with the tone of the story. Thanks, Miles. The other thing is that the story should be presented in the highest quality. So I have G. Lucero and Liz Caliedo of Sierra Lexis Communication Services Inc. to thank for copy editing my manuscript. Thank you for everything, G. Next, for me, a book is not a book until I can hold it, smell it, and read it. For making this come true for in tune, I'd like to thank Joy Reo Boca Aspa of Race Publishing and Printing Services for always being my go-to printer for all my self-published books. Thanks, Joy. I'd also like to thank uh, Cafe Book Tours for hosting the book tour of Intune uh, from November 9 to November 13. Um, thank you very much, Chilea, for accommodating me and my book. I, I also would like to thank um, Cognito, definitely. Um, they're the ones that you know set everything up. Um, including this launch, this video, and everything that, that you know relates to the marketing uh, part of my writing. Thank you to my very good high school batchmate, Sally Jean Diaz Tan, for all the help that her company has been providing me, as well as my other batchmates and other small businesses for that matter. Thank you very much. The third group of co-presenters will make your mouth water, and I'm sure Sydney, Hemig, and friends will agree. Donna's Kitchen is the new business of my niece, Donna Ross, who loves to cook and who has taken her love for cooking to the next level. Try her cheesy, beefy lasagna, banana cake, burnt bath cheesecake, ice cream cake, and she makes the ice cream herself buttered garlic shrimp, and creamy beef with mushroom. You are actually all in luck because as part of the giveaways for this launch, Donna's Kitchen will be donating her famous nacho bake and burnt fast cheesecake. Bravissimo means excellent. Passion for great food and dedication to genuine service are the hallmarks of Chef Kaina Giredini's Bravissimo Gourmet Catering. They cater to a wide range of events like intimate parties, grand celebrations, and corporate shindigs with their distinct taste for excellence. What's exciting is you will also have a chance to experience their excellence. Bravissimo has donated a 500 peso coupon which you can use to redeem any of their Bravissimo Gourmet Bowls. The Spice Factory takes your palate on an adventure around the world with its side dishes and spice products made from fresh ingredients and authentic recipes by Ms. Marie Bautista. Their kimchi and Korean products are customer favorites. And with that, my heart is full. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you, 
very much everybody for um, sharing this important day with me this important moment in my life um, thank you for being there to support me and for going on this journey with me I promise to continue writing as long as there are stories in my head that I need to share out um, thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, and before we close um, let me read a couple of excerpts from the book um, that will give you a better insight into Sydney um, her character as well as Sydney and he and their interaction so the first excerpt um, is taken from a video that Sydney recorded as part of her submission for her scholarship application. It is in answer to the question, who am I? And uh, this is the second half of that video. Here it goes. This has been my dream since I was a little girl. I know that in my situation, sometimes dreaming is a luxury I cannot afford. But I am not afraid to dream. I am not afraid to work towards my dream. I am not afraid. So let me declare this now. In a few months, if someone asks me to answer this question, who am I? My answer would be simple. I am Sydney Mendoza. I am a college student. And I will study and work very hard so that I can help my family live a better life. I will work hard so my little sister can follow in my footsteps. I will work hard, period. This next excerpt is a conversation, a very short one, between um, Sydney and Himi. Um, in this scene, Sydney is very frustrated about her situation, but she actually cannot um, tell, tell Himi everything. Um, it's not yet that time, <laughs> basically. Um, but, you know, this is a nice excerpt in the sense that, you know, you already see how much these two people are supportive of each other. So here it goes. I just need a break. I don't want to think about anything important. Not school, not the scholarship, not my family, nothing. What about me? You need a break from me? I stare at him again. No, never you. From different sides of life, voices are in tune. Together we discover we could make a difference. Mm -hmm.